All right, and we are recording. Welcome, okay. everybody. I, um, as you, as everyone know, I, uh, I do these, right? Not as interviews, but conversations. Almost like just conversating with my friends. There's no agenda. We're not trying to sell anything. It's basically, um, you know, I, and I don't even do it as far as having like interviews. Like I'm gonna do it once a week, or I'm gonna do it once a month, I do it whenever I'm inspired. And I am truly, 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 truly inspired by Summer. She is an amazing human being. And I really wish that we would have been recording uh, before I hit record because, I mean, she dropped some gems. We're talking about some pretty incredible, pretty incredible, 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 incredible things. So uh, with, with that being said, welcome, Summer. I am so glad to be uh, sharing this space with you. You have no idea. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, I consider you one of my good friends, even though we, we've, we haven't met in person, but uh, I, my wife adores you Aww. and Jen. Uh, I think you guys are amazing. I love listening to you guys. But anyway, welcome. Thank you, Tony. It is a pleasure to be here. And every time we get an opportunity to talk, it's just so enlightening. It's just so, it feels so good. It's like a feel good pill that I'm like, yeah, I'm ready for the day. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. I, I, um, no, I really, I really enjoy, I really enjoy talking, talking to you. I think, um, this is our, I don't know. A second conversation. This is our second Zoom. I know that, but yeah. I know we talk quite a bit on on Clubhouse, and yes, um, I, I think that you, you and Jen have one of the best uh, Clubhouses out there because you, you you all are talking about some pretty amazing stuff about love, and and all of that jazz, love and money, and and what else? What else do you guys talk life, about? life, love, and money? We just talk about it all, and there's so much that that's involved in life, love, and money. It's all of it, right? And yeah. so there's so much we can talk on all these different subjects, but we we love doing it. And our chemistry, it's just Jen and I love to laugh. Yeah. And we love to have fun in everything that we do. So no matter what it is that we're doing, it's all about like having a good time because life is too short not to have fun in regards to what you're doing every single day. Yeah. How, how, so how is that? How is that? Because I, I, that's one thing that, that I've been trying to practice is, you know, having fun with everything that I do. And if it's not fun, then I, I typically, I don't do it. And I don't want anybody to listen to this and, 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 and misconstrue what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying like, I get it. You know, I'm all about overcoming adversity, but I really believe in having fun and doing the things that that brings you enjoyment. I don't think anybody should have to go through hell to get to heaven, right? Right. Yeah. There's no like this purgatory, you know, where you're going like from one letter to one step to the next step to the next step. No, you know, however, life is life is like those different steps, though. Life can bring you different things. It's just how you respond versus react to a lot of different things, right? So yeah. The response versus the reaction, that's significantly different. And I think that that's something that I have just as a human have learned over the years, like, how am I going to actually, rather than being impulsive and like, just, oh my gosh, and lurch onto something that because it didn't feel good or because it felt really good or because whatever, how am I going to sit back and I'm actually going to think about responding versus reacting. And so that's something that, of course, I think all of us learn over the years, but I think in my own journey, and you asked, like, how do you, how do you maintain that, that laughter and that happiness? I don't, I think there was just something, honestly, Tony, within me, like from a very early age on, that I've been a resilient kind of person, like my grandmother and my mother and people, they're like, God, you always bounce back, no matter what it is. You're like, you're like a ball, like you just keep bouncing back. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. And I do because I don't think there's for me personally, this is for me. There's no reason why I, I, I don't want to go through life being like, Oh man, this sucks. Oh man, this, I don't want to feel that bad. Yeah. I never want to feel like that. That doesn't feel good to me. Yeah. So really it's my mindset. 
it's like how I thought about life probably most of my days. Oh yeah. And I yeah. and I'm old. I'm 51. <laughs> You are not old. That ain't. That is not old. That's not old at all. They say fifty is the new thirty. Woo! Love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's funny. That that's funny that you say that. Uh, you know, as far as like bouncing back, yeah, and and living in a state to where you know you're kind of dreading your day. That's where that's where I was at. That's where I was at. I had this this dream of. Um, of achieving these great heights of, you know, this place that I thought that was almost impossible for me to get to. And that was, you know, at the top of the corporate ladder, I always had this, like this thing inside of my head that, you know, it's going to be so cool. I love wearing ties. Like I still love wearing ties. Yeah, yeah. I do. Uh-huh. I do. And it was even like, there was even like a point where I would rock the cool suspenders to mask oh, my tie. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was like some, um, it was like on some Olivia Pope scandal type. I like Love dressing it. like really cool. Love but, it. Yeah. And I still like doing that. But I realized that, you know, that was, that was my goal. And I was really like hyper focused on it. And I would literally wake up. I would wake up Sunday, Sunday. And I would have this gut rich and feeling inside of my body where I just, I didn't want to, wake up on Monday. I dreaded it. Not didn't want to wake up like I didn't want to be in this earth, but I didn't want to be in this earth and have to go to a job where I was not getting that fulfillment. Right. Right. And uh, is that kind of like what you were going through when um, when you said that, you know, all the way up until what what point was it that changed for you? Well, I would have to start, I'm going to start a little further back. I'm going to start when I was six months of age, Tony. Okay. So my parents were really young when they had me and they came from really diverse backgrounds. Like my dad is Filipino and Hispanic and my mom is Armenian and European. So just having them together in the early sixties, they encountered their own difficulties and culture classes clashes and such. So they had their own challenges. And my mom was 17 when she had my brother and 19 when she had me. So they had us very young and I was about, and my dad was a, an abusive husband towards my mom. So she had to escape that relationship. And when I was six months of age, I had a hole in my small intestine and nobody knew my mom knew I was sick, but she was like, Oh, wow. I, she kept taking me to the doctors and whether or not it was because she was a woman or because she was young, they were dismissing her and they were like, no, she's probably got the stomach flu or she's got a cold. Well, no, it wasn't until I went into a coma at six months that they had to go into exploratory surgery. I was on the edge of death. Um, six months. And it took, yeah, I had a hole and they found a hole in my small intestine. So everything I had eaten basically was going through that hole. I had multiple surgeries at that point. And it wasn't until the doctor just came to my mom. It was like the third surgery and the final surgery. They said she has to start thriving. And my mom said, you were strapped down to your crib, your arms, your legs, you had tubes coming out of you, a heart monitor, everything was just because you couldn't pull out the tube. So they had to strap your legs and arms down. And she said, and you know what? You bounce back, you bounce back. And she's like, and ever since then, Summer, I knew like you had something in you, like where you would just bounce back all the time. And you were never, she goes, this is the problem. She goes, you were never unhappy. So nobody ever like thought, oh, she's just you know, she's super sick. Mm-hmm. You had them all fooled because you still ate, you still smiled, you still laughed, you still giggled. She's like, you were just a happy baby and you've always been that way. And so I, I look back on that and think I was given a gift. I was really given the gift of life. And she's like, you know, my mom would say, you're the miracle baby and you're my miracle baby. And she said, and you were given the gift of life. And so it's up to you. She would always say, say this to me. It's up to you to do something with yourself. She goes, I don't care what it is. As long as you're happy doing it, make sure that you're happy doing it. And hearing those words from my mom and remembering those words, that's something that impacted me. And I always knew that I could do whatever I wanted. It was up to me though. Yeah. Wow. Do you ever, do you ever hear that voice? Like that voice in your head, like when you're embarking on something that just doesn't feel right, like that you don't feel happy. Like, 
Do, do you ever hear that? Do you ever like, yeah. do you have like some sort of mantra that keep you on, yeah. on track? I, I absolutely do. And here's the big kicker. And I tell this to everybody is your values. Go back. If you don't know what your values are, you know, you being a Marine, right? Yeah. You go in there and they have a set of core values. Right. And they want you to live by those core values. They want you to practice by those core values. They want you to create a process by those core values. Same thing with me. I go back to my values. What do I believe in? If it doesn't feel right, maybe it's not in alignment with what I value. Maybe it's not in alignment with how I'm living my life and those values and beliefs that I have. And I go back to that every time, Tony, because that's my guiding star. That's my guiding light are those values. And it might seem really simple, but you can get really lost if you don't know what where your foundation of values are and where you're launching from. And I'm not saying you got to be this or that and the other. You figure it out. Figure out what those values and beliefs are and live by them. And then when you have them on a sheet, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not trying to be pitchy here. But no, I no, no. It's this, okay. this book right here, F yeah, get real strong language. People are like, what is that book about? Well, we take the idea of strong is it language. F? F it says it's, fuck, right? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love okay. it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what it's about is taking that idea of strong language because it is a sensitive subject, taking that idea and posing that in against your own values and beliefs. What did it feel like when you use that first strong language word? What were you told about strong language? Yeah, How did it yeah. feel using that word? And we take you through the strategy, right? Yeah. And the reason we do that is to figure out your own values and beliefs. And we put in things like movies and, and books and things that use strong language mm-hmm. and, and talk about that in this book. And we do that because values is a launching point. That's your foundation from where you launch every day. Because if you don't know what those are in relation to your own personal values, let me ask you something. If you didn't, if you... If you had a set of values and you went into a company, right? And you asked them, what are your, what are your values? What are your, what's your mission statement? And you were like, oh, that doesn't feel right to me. Why doesn't that feel right to you? Yeah. Does it not align with your values? Are you going to have longevity at that job? Are you going to have longevity with the partner that you're partnered with? Because your values are so off. And that's why Jen and I, you know, Jen and I yeah, yeah, talk yeah. with life, love and money, right? We talk about values all the time in relation to your relationships, in relation to your love, in relation to your money, because if you're so off in regards to your value set with your partner, with your job, it probably isn't going to be a lasting relationship. I agree. I agree. That makes me a big thing. Yeah. That makes me think about, um, I was working in uh, construction. I think, um, yeah, yeah, I was in construction and I was the director of safety. And what I was doing was I noticed that we were kind of like our culture or our culture was set up to where it was just all men, right? All men and a particular uh, color of men. So I made it, I made it my, uh, my duty or my goal, not to just diversify my, my environment, but I made it to where I wanted it to be where everybody was welcome. I wanted it to really be inclusive. And I remember, and I didn't outwardly say this. I didn't say, this is what I'm going to start doing in my department. It was just one of those things that this is just how I roll. I roll like this. I'm not going to take into consideration, you know, any or everybody else's, you know, fears of me hiring, whatever. But I will never forget, I got pulled to the side by, uh, the president of the company. And he said, oh, I noticed that, that you're hiring up there. And I go, yep. He said, um, who are you looking towards? And I told him, I told him her name. And he goes, you're hiring, you're hiring a lady. And then, so as soon as he said that, as soon as he said that, which is really why I never forget how I felt. I said, this, this isn't going to be good. And not that mm-hmm. conversation, but just as far as their values and, mm-hmm. and my value, mm-hmm. their values and my values. Right. I, I just knew that it was because it was the second comment that I had heard. Mm-hmm. The second comment, like, what are you doing? You know, that's that's just weird. And it was almost like they thought I was like hiring aliens to do this freaking job, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, he said, you know, we got enough, 
we got enough women walking around here. And, you know, that was a red flag. I should have just left, right? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, he said that. So, so I stayed and I stuck it out and I fought that battle. And I'm, and the reason that I thought about that was, you know, values, 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 values. Those should have been some questions, you know, if I would have knew what I knew now, if I knew that then, those would have been some questions that I would have been asking. I would have been looking at that instead of just looking at, you know, how much money am I going to make? What, how, how big is my office? And, you know, am I going to have, like, it was just like, it's just so crazy. And I love that you say that because those, those are the things that, that matter. Those are the things yeah. that matter are your core values. Nothing else, nothing else matter. Have you ever been in one of those situations where he just was like, this is, this is not for me. This isn't oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I'm like anybody else. It, it wasn't easy getting that undergraduate degree, getting that, you know, having that imposter syndrome, it wasn't easy getting that master. Well, the master degree was probably the easiest because I finally figured out what my value set was. Right. Yeah, yeah. That was like, okay, I got this. Like I am so on this. So that, that was like this, the PhD, that's just a lot of work. That was a lot of work, but let me tell you, after like the PhD, and here's the thing, Tony, with me, I, I'm a military, I was a military spouse for 21 plus years. Right. Yeah, yeah. And what I call myself is the unlimited potential coach, because really, I believe that everybody has unlimited, unlimited potential. I, I really do. I've always thought that I've started my journey working in nonprofit. So I worked out in community. I've seen a lot, <laughs> but because of being that military spouse for 21 plus years, I had to get up and leave jobs, get up and leave jobs, get up and leave jobs. Mm -hmm. Not by choice, because like you, I always thought I had this grand idea of being that tiger lady up in that big office and having 10 years somewhere and blah. That yeah, shit yeah. was not going to happen for me because yeah, I was yeah. married to somebody in the military, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the jobs that I went to was in North Carolina, and I'm sitting there. And I'm asking them questions because I go into every interview like I'm ready. I'm going to ask them questions. They're going to this is going to be my interview to interview them. That's mm -hmm. how I look at interviews. Even when I went in to defend my dissertation, it was my opportunity to ask my board the questions. And yeah. they were like, well, we don't even need to ask you any questions because you're done. like you you covered it all right. So I was yeah. like, OK, so I go into this job. And I'm sitting there and I'm asking them all these questions and what their values are, what their mission is, you know, what they're looking for in an employee, all these, you know, what they would be looking at in regards to my skill set that I could offer them. And they said, well, we really like that, you know, you hold this degree and you've done this and you've done that. But I said, how many people have been in this position in a matter of 10, you know, five years? Oh, I love and that. They said, oh my God. That's an amazing question. Yeah. Right. And they said seven people. Hmm. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> something's not happening right here. Like th this entity does not want to change. Like yeah. they do not want to make shift. They're asking for change and they're interviewing people to bring in change. But something's not quite right here. And I should have listened to like that intuition, the hairs mm -hmm. that went up in the back of my neck. And I didn't. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't listen because I was that military spouse that like when you are offered a job and there are minimal jobs in the area, you got to take, take the it. job. Right. Take yeah, yeah, yeah. So I took the job and I, I think I was for about a year. And in that year, it was one of the most miserable experiences. I was working around the clock. I was, I was doing my job. I was holding us up at 98% fulfillment in that hospital that I worked at in regards to like making sure every single one of those beds practically was full, you know, doing intake assessment, teaching, modeling, doing all this stuff, but they just, they wanted a different structure. And finally, at that point, I was like, they kept fighting change. And I said, what is it that you want? right? Because other people would come in and they want this change and they want. And so they were so fickle about it that I was like, I I've had enough. Like yeah. that's enough. I'll go and teach at somewhere. I'll teach somewhere. And I certainly did. I got a job teaching at a university and at the junior college. And it was great experience at the junior college and at the university. But I knew that I should have listened to that intuition that I put myself through a year of absolute torture 
and I ran three departments as a director. And you guess what happened to me, Tony, What's during that? that time? What's that? I got really sick. Yeah. Wow. I, got, I ended up, yeah. I, you know what happened? In my body, something clicked. And I went to the doctor and they said, you know what? They ran all these tests and they said, you have lupus. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so wow. I had this one big red eye and I was like, what the heck is this eye so red for? And they said, you are having an inflammatory process and your ANA, you know, is off the charts. Your levels are off the charts. So I had to go to specialists. I had to do this because I wasn't getting sleep. I was pushing myself. The company didn't really want change. I should have listened to my own intuition. I should have listened to my own value set. I should have went back that, to that and said, mm, this is not the right match for you. Wow. Wow. So you see, it's yeah. not like it's all easy every day, but you come through it, even with being diagnosed now with lupus, it's like you come through it and it's about what do you want to create? What do you want your mindset to look like? You know, are you out there achieving what you want to achieve on your terms? I love that. On your terms. On your terms. I love that. Yeah, just like you, because what you're wearing right there, hashtag inspire, you inspire people every day. Bro, you just plug my terms. shirt. Like <laughs> <laughs> and what's on your wall back there too. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and that's what I find so awesome about you, Tony, is that you've gone out there, you had, you know, the Marine Corps, you did all these different jobs, and yet you found your passion, your why, your purpose. Tell me what don't you love me, so much about what you do. Don't make me cry. <laughs> oh, you're so I, awesome. Because I will, I will, and I'll, and I'll leave it. I won't even cut it out. But um, what I love about, what I love about what I do is, is there's no bullshit in what I do. It's yeah. what I do. There's no bullshit in it. And the fact that when I wake up in the morning, the first thing that I'm thinking about, and this is simple, right? This is simple. Inspire, right? Yeah. But that's what I'm thinking about. Every morning I wake up and I'm like, how, how can I inspire? Who can I inspire? Who can I be inspired by? So it's not just by, it's not just, you know, me giving, 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 giving. I'm a taker. And that's why like, I'm like, when you're talking, I'm like captivated because, because I'm learning you and, you know, a few other people like where I legit learn. Yeah. And that's what I love about what I do is that, you know, I'm given and I'm taken and I'm, and I'm honest about it. Um, the thing that I love, I would say that I love the most is those days where I'm just like, like, I'll be telling my wife, I'll just say like, I, you know, I'm not questioning my intentionality, but just saying, you know, just relook, like re-examining myself and just asking myself, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? You know, how does it feel to, to walk in my purpose? Is this my purpose? Because we redesign it and we redefine it all the time. And I always come back and, I, and the question and the answer to that question is always yes. Is always yes. The, it's been no for many years. It's been no. I did. I was. I was in the Marine Corps. I love serving my country, but I definitely couldn't. I definitely couldn't. You know, stay in it because I was realizing that you know we had a divorce. You know, and yeah. had a divorce and all of that, and everybody was surprised that I had only had one divorce when I was in it. So then I, I went to the fire department and I was working for the fire the the DOD fire service. Yeah. And, it, and it was the same thing. I was spending so much time away from home, but I loved my job. I really loved my job. I really loved helping people and making a difference. And I went to safety and it was, and it was the same thing, but there was only, there was one like common denominator and the common denominator was the fact that I was able to, to pour into other people's lives. And man, and it's not the money especially right now, it's not the money. What really <laughs> inspires me more than anything is opening up my inbox and getting a message and just saying, hey, you know, when you said, keep going, don't give up, I know that the world seems like it's against you. Keep going because the universe is in your favor. When you said that, 
it made me realize that I do have space and I do have purpose in this world. I thought like somebody really said that they was they they were thinking about like leaving this earth until they saw my message. And it fucked me up. It fucked me up because it was one of those messages where you're, I mean, you're a content creator too. Yeah. So a lot of times I think as content creators and no matter what anybody says, I don't care what nobody say, they can, those people, they can say, oh, I just put content out. And if people, you know, agree with it, they do. If they don't, they don't. I put stuff up, stuff out. I want people to like my stuff. I want people to be inspired by it. I want people to see it. It does not make me happy when I spend three hours on making content and nobody sees it. I don't care. I I don't care. I don't care if people are going to say that, you know, oh, those are vanity metrics. No, I have a, I have a purpose and my purpose is to put my message out and I don't, I want it to go to millions, yeah. but the lesson for me in that moment was this was a this was a post that was probably one of my most lower performing posts that I've ever had mm. and that person said that they were getting ready to take their life or they, they were thinking about it mm. before they saw it and oh my god that motivated me so much and it's just like so whenever I start looking at the numbers I'm like no there's that one person yeah there's that one person that's looking at this so you need to do it for, for them. You need to do it for that one person. So it's just like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm getting emotional right now. Just thinking about it because I, I feel like that's, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm, I'm on this earth. That's why I've been through the things that I've been through. Not so that I can just make it out, but so that I can help other people make it out. Absolutely. No, I, Absolutely hear that. And one of the things, and I want to touch back on this, one of the things that really resonates with me about people and about you, Tony, is your authenticity. It's not what they're making. It's not the money. It's not any of that garbage. And and I don't want to say minimize that to it's not important because we all know that to monetize is really important because we got to live, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But what resonates with me is your authenticity, is your story, oh, is how you tell your story, I, the the passion that you have. And for me, it's like, I want to work with you. I want to spend time with that guy because he's got it. He's got it. He's real. And when you said you don't have to deal with all that garbage, let me tell you, there's so much garbage out there in these jobs and in these places. It's like when you get to that point where you're like, I'm done making money for them. I want to make money for me. I want to do something that fills my life up with like my why, my passion, all of that good stuff, living in my authenticity. I hear that from you. And I love that. And to me, that is so inspiring. It is inspiring. It is inspiring. And it's that one person. And let me tell you, Tony, I worked in mental health facilities, locked facilities, day in, day out for years. I have a PhD, I have a master's in human services, a PhD in clinical psych. And when I sat in there working with people who were discouraged, who were sad, um, who are on the point of suicidal, homicidal, grave disability, that they can't take care of themselves any longer. Mm -hmm. When I hear that that one message, that could have been the the one message I got 17 likes that day and not 147 likes. But that one message touched somebody, that's damn important. Yeah. That is important because you know, like I know, we're creating all the time and yeah, we want to touch lots of people. We want like... You know, we want to reach lots of people is what we want to do. And we want to like impact their lives. And we want them to feed back into that and say, you know, you made a difference in my life, but how can I help you? Like, how can you help me here, there, and somewhere else, right? How can you help that school? How can you help this? And we want to reach a broader range of folks, right? And you are. And what resonates is that authenticity. And I love it. I love it because you're wholly in. So thanks for sharing that with the world because Tony, you're an absolute joy. Stop. You're I'm so, joy. This is about you. I, I know. Not, I can't help not it. Not me. <laughs> and that's what I love about you. Know what? You. It's you're about awesome. us. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Let me ask you a question. All what, right, go. What drives you? Me. Mm-hmm. You? Because if I look outside for drivers, that's going to be short-lived. 
So I've got to find the passion and my why and what drives me every day. So I get up, I get up for me. I get up and I put my feet down. And when I put my feet down, I'm thankful for being, having that moment. You know, people always ask like, what are you thankful for? What is your, what do you, what's the gratitude message for today? And that's the moments, the moments I'm given on this earth. And I'm not joking about that. I mean, I could have been gone at six months, but I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still here. And I think there's something that's, you know, that's calling me to make sure that I'm here, not just, you know, yes, for other people, but for myself as well. And I think we forget about ourselves and all this, this chaos and this fast life and, you know, going so fast. Yeah. But we forget about ourselves. Yeah. Don't forget about yourself and all of that chaos, all of that, that going, 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 going. Stop, yeah. stop, stop and take that deep breath and remember, ground yourself. That's why I go back to know your values, ground yourself, live in your authenticity, because that is about knowing yourself. And then you'll be able to help more people because you're grounded, you know your values, you live in that authenticity. Yeah, and so yeah. me, I get up for me every day. And that is not selfish. No, I and don't I hope that so. everybody else gets up for themselves every day because that's an internal motivator, not some external motivator where we're looking for, you know, oh gosh, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. That, that's not going to work for very long. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And that really resonated with me because um, for a very, very, very long time, I, I lived my life kind of thriving off of the external and not, and, and, and I'm talking about the, the four walls that, that I live in. Yeah. You know, as far as like my wife, as far as my kids, it's always, it's, it's always been them, 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 everybody, yeah. everybody, everybody, everybody. And I, um, and a lot of people would say, you know what, that's being a good father. That's being a good husband. And I had one of those moments, um, I would say probably about a few weeks ago, um, where I was looking through my phone and here I am, I'm looking through my phone and I'm looking at all these pictures. I'm looking at all these cool places um, that me and my wife were going. I'm looking at, I had did a video in my office is, you know, big old, big old office all to myself. And, you know, I'm bringing in the most money that I had ever brought in, you know, to in, into my household. I had never made this amount of money. And if we wrote down all of this stuff, right, we wrote down it all. And it was like a narrator, somebody was narrating it. And they would say, Oh, my God, you have the perfect life. But what I did was I zoomed in on the picture and I zoomed in on my face. And, oh, my God, it was such the opposite of everything that you described, because I wasn't living for myself, I was living for everybody else. And you could see it. You could see the hurt in my eyes. You can see that I hadn't slept for weeks. You can see that I was stopping at the, the gas station, banging freaking Red Bulls before work. You can oh, see wow. it. Like yeah. you can just see it. Like my face was like really swole. My eyes, one eye was like, like it was really, and I, I actually posted it. I actually posted it on LinkedIn and a couple people was like, what the hell are you thinking? You know, posting that, like somebody said, oh man, you got, you, you must be really secure in yourself to do that. And I'm just like, no, nah, I, it's more about me going on the, on the journey of redefining myself, redefining, yeah. you know, who I was and, and who I am. And when you said that, that's what that made me think about. That made me think oh, about wow you know, doing it, doing it for, for yourself. And I think that's big for you to say that because you do a lot for a lot of people. I, I see you, I, 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 I check you out, you know, and I do a little, a little stalking, not the bad <laughs> stalking, but you know what I mean? I, I look, yeah. I check out your feeds. I do that for all my friends. I want to see what yeah. all of you guys are up to, but um, core women, that's definitely not about just you. That's about yeah. what, what is that about? That's about all women. That's about even men. I mean, men have asked to be on my show. So that's a podcast. That's Those are documentary films. That's the book that I wrote. It all comes back to, it all streams into that same funnel of values. What I value, creating yeah. a platform for voices, creating a platform for people who want to talk about their journeys, who want to change 
their perspective, understand, better understand their why. So when I was thinking about this too, and what you're saying, Tony, I have to go back to, you know, when I talk to people and they're sitting down with me and after an interview like this, they always say, I've never told anybody that. Yeah. And I go back to them and go, do you feel comfortable with me posting this? Do you feel comfortable with me putting this out there? Because I want to make sure that you're comfortable because you disclose this information to me, that you're comfortable. And they said, yes, because I feel so much better getting that off my chest. I feel so yeah. much better understanding yeah. my purpose. I feel so much better talking about my trauma. I never told anybody about it that way, you know, and now I can move forward. I can start understanding myself and why I've acted or behaved A, B, and C ways, or I can start, you know, really kind of creating my why and understanding my purpose better. And I'm like, ah, there, that's what this is all about. That is what this is all about every single day, whether it's a program I create, whether it's a video I create, whether it's a podcast that I do, it's about the why, it's about the purpose, it's about finding and understanding that journey and where you wanna be. Where do you wanna be? Where do you wanna be in five years, Tony? Where do you wanna be, A, B, and C? Where do you wanna be? And are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for that unlimited potential? Because you've got it, you've got it. I don't need to, you know, maybe I'm the one here cheerleading for you and kind of showing you the roadmap, but you've got it. It's all right here. It's a matter of mindset. It's a matter of intuition. It's a matter of your strategy, your process. Maybe yeah. that's just like, kind of like all over the place. I but love that. You've got it here. You've got everything you need right here. Right. Here. Ooh, I love that. Are, yeah. you, are you spying on me? That's like, <laughs> that's like my whole, um, that's my whole thing, especially with, with some of my, uh, some of the coaching clients that I have. It's when we start this process, you know, the, the initial like intake and yeah. um, they're like basically looking at me like I'm this guru and I'm like, nah, man, I, I, I am not a guru. You are the guru of your own life. You have everything inside of you to make a difference. I'm just here to listen to you freaking figure it out along the way that's my job as a coach and it's funny that you said that because i i believe that i believe that it's oh, like nobody God. external of you can know what's better for you than you your body like yourself your mind your soul like nobody can get that yeah, yeah. totally i i mean i truly believe that but here's the thing tony and i, I think that we look big we look big at going like, let's go big. Let's do this big. And sometimes the big thing is the small step. Ooh. Oh, you know, it's the small step. And I was in a mastermind the other day and I said, sometimes you just got to be the disruptor of your own life. And that's scary. And we can go into that. That's a whole different conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's I just, I just wrote that down because that was the gym. The, it, yeah. Yeah. So the big thing is the small step. It's the like small that. step. And when I got done with that mastermind, we went out on the group about what did you, you know, what'd you gain from today? And people said, I just need to take the small steps. And I think we get lost in the big picture mm -hmm. and forget about the small steps because the small steps are going to be lead to the big goal, right? It's like, if you want to get technical, the objectives lead to the goal, blah, blah, blah. But I'm using small steps, small steps, small steps will get you to that bigger goal. And as you, as a creator, you know how that develops and changes and evolves every single day, every oh, week, God. right? Yeah. And that involvement is fine, that you wanna evolve, you wanna change, and you wanna give the people that, you know, what it's, what's resonating with them. You wanna like tune into that, right? Right, right. But, you, but here's the thing, if you always know that you're coming back to your value set, what your beliefs and values are, and this is a conversation Jen and I just had, we said, you know, it's funny. It's funny how somebody puts something up there and boom, it goes like crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like this cat sitting there. But here we are trying to change the world and you're getting 17 hits. <laughs> I love that. And it's like, you're what right. the hell just happened there? <laughs> you're right. You know, yep, and, it's yep. like, 
cat. But uh, it's like, a that's a okay. cat. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Like, yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. like, it's that damn cat. Okay, I'll give you a cat, but I'm going to give you a cat with value, right? Because yeah, yeah. that cat's going to be saying something to you. Yeah. So it's like, oh my God. And, and that's the time where, you know, as an entrepreneur, you're like, oh, good, good. But you go, no, you go back to those values and go, I'm not going to change. You know, I may change my process a little bit, but I'm never going to, I'm never going to push against those values because that's always going to be who I am. And yeah. once I start doing that and going against those values, you're really not in alignment. Yeah. You know, there's the integrity is lost. I love that. I love that. Yeah. That's yeah. That's, that's, that's funny that you say that because, um, I, I've kind of went through different phases as far as like creating, uh, creating content and I'm, I'm not like kind of where I'm at right now is just like, man, why did I do that initially? Why did I do that? Like I, it would be like when I was in safety to, to raise awareness for safety, I would show accidents and mm. I would show accidents and I stopped. And the reason why I did it <clears throat> was because I showed an accident one time in a class and this guy was like, oh my God, he finally got it. He finally got it as far as like safety. And it was something bad that he had been doing. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to show the rest of the world this so that they can stop doing the things that they're doing until, um, you know, I, I talked to somebody and they were just like that, seeing that really traumatized me. And I stopped doing it. I was like, oh, screw that. So, and, and then I went to where I was talking about like solely about the military. And these are all my different passions, right? All my different passions. Yeah. And I would post videos to where they would get like a million. They would get like a, a, a million hits. One was like 2 million. Yeah. And, you know, that was, that was really cool. But it was just something that clicked in me. And I said, this isn't, this is only going to affect a small group of people. Yeah. Only a small group of people. Cause I love, I love this stuff, but what do I feel like people really need to hear or feel? Yeah. And I just listen to myself. I listen to my intuition. I listen to the people I looked in not the comments, but my DMs. Yeah. I'm hurting really bad right now. Tony, can you help me find a job? Mm. I just got fired. My wife don't know that I got fired. Mm. I'm, you know, can can we freaking can we chat? And then we're sitting there FaceTiming, talking about it. And I'm just mm. like, shit. Everybody, right? Everybody is going through something. So I want to be part of of helping that. And then when I switched over, it was weird. I would get I would tell my wife again with the with the whole vanity metrics, right? I would tell my wife, man, how the hell do I go from like having like six thousand, you know, six thousand, you know, likes or you know interactions or whatever to where, you know, it's like twenty. And it's just like, yeah. honey, stay true to yourself. Stay true to yourself. Yeah. Stay true to yourself. And I just kept right. kept doing that. And the vanity metrics they're they're shit they're exactly what they are they're they're vanity metrics yeah but you know it's a tool just like anything else you don't want to overuse it it's a it's a tool but yeah i i say that to say that i i really resonate with, with what you said there it, it, it made me think i i love talking to you you're such a person this I is forgot so we're recording I, I know, right? It's it's we're recording finally, and I know we can have these conversations forever. And I absolutely love having these conversations with you, Tony, because I think that we're in alignment. Yeah. You know, I think that we've come from from, and we talked about this earlier. We've come from these these situations where it wasn't always fun, and we did have these challenges, and that's the reality of life. Yeah. And you know, my mom wasn't one of those helicopter parents. She wasn't one of those snowplow parents where she was going to rescue, rescue, rescue me, right? No, my, it, my mom was like, no, you're on your own. You, when you no. go get a job, you ride your bike to work and back. And I even right got up work at one o'clock in the morning and I'd be riding my bike home from in the dark home. And it's not because she was bad. Mom. She was like, this is your responsibility. You call me before you leave. And I know that you're going to be coming home. But remember, this is your job. You're going to be making the money. You're going to be buying your prom dresses. You're going to be doing all that stuff. I'm not buying that stuff for you. 
Yeah. And she was raised in a very different way. She had well-off parents who would buy and buy and buy up until they passed away, right? But wow. she's like, I don't want to raise you that way. I want to raise you where you can get back up. I you understand that. what it means to get back up and that you can be resilient and that, you know, I'm not going to always rescue you. Wow. And so those were some hard lessons because it was like, wow, okay, who do I have? I could count on her. Don't get me wrong. I could count on her. But she just wanted to drive home that, hey, you've got so much potential and you can choose to use it to your benefit or choose not to use it to your benefit. And that is solely up to you. And that's the part of your core. That's part of my you, core. You like what I did there? You like what so I did there? When she messes up, right? I go, yeah. Mom, what do you expect me to say to you right now? Yeah. I'm going to tell you what you told me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be empathic, but let me say, it's up to you. Yeah. So, what's your process? What yeah. does that look like for you? If that's not working for you, how are you going to change that so yeah. that starts working better for you, right? Yeah. So, how, and I'm going to go through the same process that I would with a client or that I would with a mastermind or I would with, because here's the thing. It's not up to anybody else. Yeah. It's great to support, surround yourself with supportive people because that really helps, especially as an entrepreneur, as you're going through your life, yeah. that helps being oh, yeah. around the supportive people, but it really comes from what are the changes and what are the steps, even if they're small, because even for some people, just getting out of bed daily is a huge step. It is. It and is. I don't want to devalue that. Because for some people, that's a huge step. It is. So, it is. you know, we got to listen to people. We got to watch their behavior. We've got to like hear what they have to say. And I think that's what we both do. And I think that's why we enjoy each other so much, Tony, because uh -huh. we resonate with one another. And we know that this, this journey wasn't easy, but we got up every time to redefine ourselves, but we kept with our values. Yeah. We stuck with those values. Yeah. I got one last question for yeah. you. Yeah. My favorite question. Okay. Um, your legacy. What, what's your legacy when it's all said and done? And, you know, the things that you, you value the things that you would like to be remembered for? What, what would that be? I was had a kind heart that I gave back to community that I walked the talk that I wasn't there just saying, Oh, you know, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to, but I was doing the same thing. I came up the ranks like everybody else, you know, I don't expect somebody to do what I wouldn't, I, you know, I asked them what I would, you know, if I were, if I'm asking you to do something, I did it too. Yeah. You know, we may do it in a different way, but you've got it. You've got unlimited potential. And I want people to know that I was always out there saying and supporting and creating things to show them to model that they had an unlimited potential unlimited potential yes because things scare me it scared me starting a podcast yeah it scares me to do public speaking like these things scare me too. Me. me too but it's like yeah. i do them and i might yeah. stutter my way through them me too. i might but i'm gonna do it because it's so important to me that i'm out there supporting community that i'm lifting others up and that if i can be that person that gives that one step or helps them get up in the morning or inspires them. Hashtag inspire, right? I love it. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're here to do. And that's what I want my legacy to be. I honestly do. Wow. I love it. Where, yes. um, where can our listeners and readers, not necessarily, yeah, readers and viewers uh, find you if they want to connect with you? Oh, gosh. Because they will okay. want to connect with you. Oh. This is really good. <laughs> so... Corewomen.com, of course, you can go to korewomen.com. And I'm out there for women and men. So I started this business and I thought, oh yeah, let's focus on women. But honestly, so many more men come to me as well as women. And they are like, hey, Summer, what, what can we do here? What can we do here? How can we collaborate here? So corewomen.com. I'm also at Core Women on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Twitter, it's Core Women One. But I also have the Life, Love, and Money show. So you can see that on Facebook, our Life, Love, and Money Facebook page, where we talk about life, love, and money matters. People can DM their questions to me, and we can answer those questions for you every week. It's 30 minutes of free coaching every Thursday, right? So on Facebook, the Life, Love, and Money Facebook page with Summer and Jen, you can go to our Twitter page. We've got a Life, Love, and Money Twitter page. So, And my book, 
FEI Get Real with Strong Language, you can find that on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Walmart.com. It's, it's pretty much everywhere. I love it. I love thank it. You. I love it. Thank you for agreeing to do this. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for spending your time with me today because your time, energy, and effort, you can be selective about that. And yet you decided to ask me on your show. So thank you so much for that, Tony. All right. Awesome.